Massive flash floods struck Saudi Arabia during a night of relentless torrential rainfall, causing streets in Mecca, the ultimate destination of the Hajj pilgrimage in Islam, to become inundated. Mecca's renowned Black Cube, the Kaaba, where millions of devout Muslims gather annually for worship and blessings, has recently experienced a series of extraordinary events. From violent sandstorms and unexpected floods to a mysterious sound emanating from the Kaaba, these occurrences have not only astonished attendees, but have also captured global attention. The sanctity of the Kaaba has been shrouded in mystery, prompting questions about whether these events are mere natural incidents, or if they signify something more profound and divine. To unravel the secrets surrounding the recent upheaval at the Kaaba in Mecca, let's explore deeper in today's video. Throughout history, storms have held significant symbolic meaning in various cultures and religions, and the Bible is no exception. In biblical narratives, storms are frequently employed as powerful metaphors conveying divine messages, human emotions, and spiritual transformations. Let's delve into the symbolism of storms in the Bible and explore their profound meanings. In biblical contexts, Storms often symbolize the immense power and might of God. They serve as reminders of God's sovereignty over creation and his ability to control the forces of nature. Psalm 29.3 states, The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. This verse vividly portrays God's voice as thunder, emphasizing his authority and supremacy. In an unusual turn of events, Mecca in Saudi Arabia experienced a strong storm last night, bringing strong winds and heavy rain. This city, home to the Kaaba, the most revered location in Islam, witnessed a natural phenomenon that moved many people to tears and wonder. This event raised concerns among Muslims about its possible significance as a sign from God. There is a belief in various signs, including storms, pointing towards the return of Jesus. As the storm hit Mecca, the Grand Mosque's minarets were silhouetted against the evening sky, and the storm began. Pilgrims and locals observed the stars being obscured by gathering dark clouds. Despite gusts exceeding 80 kilometers per hour, interrupting outdoor activities and causing some damage to buildings, the Kaaba in the middle of the Grand Mosque remained still and unshaken, a testament to enduring faith in the face of calamity. Emergency services promptly responded, ensuring the security of both the local populace and the thousands of pilgrims in the city for Umrah. Mecca rarely experiences such severe weather at this time of year, according to meteorologists. Despite the intensity of the storm, the people of Mecca maintained an unwavering attitude. Social media posts depicted the city covered in rain, with the Kaaba standing resolutely in the background. This site served as a powerful message to have faith and persevere. While cleanup efforts are underway, meteorologists are keeping a close eye on weather patterns in case of unexpected developments. The Kaaba, representing the tenacious spirit of millions who face it in prayer daily, stands as a symbol of hope and fortitude in the face of nature's strength. As discussions arise about the storm's possible significance, the anticipation of Jesus' second coming is viewed as a future worldwide event of glorious magnitude. It represents the culmination of Jesus' sacrificial act on the cross for our redemption. Understanding the certainty of Jesus' second coming is crucial. The return of Christ will be a magnificent global event, unparalleled in human history. It signifies a shift in our existence a transformation possible by choosing Jesus Christ as our Savior within the framework of eschatology. In this context, it's essential to recognize that the Second Coming isn't necessarily the ultimate conclusion of everything. Rather, it marks a transition from our current state to the potential we can attain through faith in Jesus Christ. Given the immense importance of this event, numerous questions arise. What events lead up to it? How can we discern its timing? Will it be visible to us? Who can be saved? What happens to those who have passed away? What about Satan and his angels? We are assured of a second coming through biblical teachings. Just as the Bible foretold Jesus' first coming, where he lived a sinless life, ministered to people, 
and sacrificed himself for the redemption of sins, Christ's return will be a global event of profound significance. Apart from anticipating the nature of this grand event, we naturally seek to understand when it will occur. The secrecy surrounding the timing of Christ's return is justified by the belief that the when is less critical than the what and why of the event. The Bible underscores our calling to love, serve, and lead others to Him in the meantime. If God chooses not to disclose certain details in the Bible, it indicates that such information is not essential for the fulfillment of His plan in our lives. The Bible emphasizes the imminent return of Jesus, signifying the likelihood of it happening at any moment. The term imminent suggests that there are no additional events in biblical prophecy that must occur before Jesus returns. This concept is generally embraced among evangelicals, with some variations based on dispensationalism and differing views on the timing of the rapture. Jesus spoke of his return repeatedly during his ministry, generating questions from his disciples, including inquiries about the timing. In response, Jesus emphasized the uncertainty of the day or hour, known only to the Father. The importance lies in remaining vigilant, as the appointed time remains unknown. In discussions about eschatology, it's crucial to acknowledge that God does not intend for us to fully comprehend the timing of His plans. Despite this, the Bible assures us of the nearness of Jesus' return, urging believers to await it eagerly. James encourages patience and firmness, emphasizing that the Lord's coming is imminent. Revelation 1-2 and 22-10 also convey that the imminent time is approaching. Jesus instructed his disciples to be vigilant for his return, emphasizing the need for readiness as the Son of Man will come unexpectedly. As stated in Luke 12:40, it is crucial to differentiate between the second coming of Christ, marked by his victory over enemies and the establishment of his kingdom, and the rapture of the church. The second coming, entailing various end times events such as the tribulation, is not imminent. However, the pre-tribulation perspective suggests that the rapture, occurring before the tribulation, is indeed imminent. The readiness command implies the imminence of the rapture. Our salvation is poised to be revealed, and Jesus could return at any moment, initiating the events outlined in Revelation. Similar to the wise virgins in Jesus' parable, we must be alert, for the exact day and hour are unknown, Matthew 25, uh, 13. Preparing for this impending scenario involves mental, spiritual, and physical readiness. God desires individual and national salvation through repentance and wholehearted commitment. Despite the present signs pointing to salvation through judgment and tribulation, there is hope for revival if the nation repents, acknowledging our collective sins and returning to our godly roots is essential. The severity of God's judgments brought on by our own sins, calls for repentance and action. National revival hinges on individual hearts, experiencing revival first. The church must rise at this critical hour, serving as instruments for God's revival. While acknowledging the impending storm of judgment on America, the prayer is for judgment to lead to restoration and redemption, rather than total destruction. Praying for mercy in the face of the approaching perfect storm of judgment, the hope is that overcomers will emerge to lead the church in holiness, righteousness, and victory. The overcomers reject worldliness and apathy. May the Lord be merciful in the midst of the impending judgment, and the cry is for the way of the Lord to be prepared. The plea is for Jesus to come and save, emphasizing that it is never too late to surrender one's life to God enabling participation in the great end-time work to demonstrate God's power and glory worldwide. In the midst of a perfect storm of end-time events, God will execute flawless work. On the morning of the third day, a thunderous and lightning-filled atmosphere enveloped the mountain, accompanied by a dense cloud and a resounding trumpet blast that caused tremors among the camp's inhabitants. Subsequently, Moses led the people out to meet with God positioning them at the mountain's base. Mount Sinai became shrouded in smoke as the Lord descended upon it in fire, reminiscent of smoke rising from a furnace. The entire mountain quaked vigorously, and the trumpet's volume intensified. 
In this awe-inspiring manifestation, Moses spoke and the voice of God responded, Exodus. This event marked the commencement of God, imparting his law to the Israelites, emphasizing their sanctification and distinctiveness from surrounding nations. The symbolism of storms in scripture underscores God's power and awe-inspiring presence, manifested through darkness, lightning, thunder, earthquakes, and fire. God's manifestation on Mount Sinai not only conveyed his holiness, power, and purity, but also emphasized the separation he requires between himself and sin. The impact of witnessing this storm, combined with directives like washing clothes and maintaining a distance from the mountain, left a profound impression on the Israelites regarding their sinfulness and God's majestic holiness. The fear instilled in the Israelites was not only directed outward, even Moses acknowledged his own fear, recognizing the fear of the Lord as the starting point of true knowledge. Reverence and obedience were essential for the Israelites to become God's holy nation, enjoying the privileges of a kingdom of priests. Acknowledging God's control over the weather has theological implications. Bad weather, destructive in nature, occurs with God's permission, yet it is also a consequence of the fallen state of the world. This understanding cautions against attributing specific judgments to every storm, recognizing that God has built weather into the natural order of things. Furthermore, God's mastery over all weather serves as a contrast to the belief in ancient Near Eastern deities associated with weather, highlighting the folly of pursuing foreign gods. The Old Testament mentions Baal as a storm god, often considered the king of gods by Israel's neighbors. God's demonstration of authority over weather through his prophets emphasized the futility of chasing after such false deities. In the context of Satan's power, it is crucial to note that Satan's authority is limited. Satan had to seek God's permission to bring calamities upon Job, indicating that God ultimately controls such events. The exchange between God and Satan cannot be used to establish Satan's power over any form of weather. Instead, it highlights God's ultimate authority. In times of unfavorable weather, it's important to recognize that the experience is not necessarily a divine punishment from God for specific sins. While God can employ weather to either punish wrongdoers or safeguard the righteous, such instances are rare miracles. The adversity of bad weather is inherent in the fallen state of humanity within a broken world, analogous to how God sends rain upon both the righteous and the wicked. Tornadoes, too, can affect both. It is crucial to ponder what defines bad weather. Typically, it is the havoc it wreaks. Destruction, however, is not merely a happenstance of human migration and technology, but a consequence of the foundations laid in construction. Consider the analogy of a well-built house enduring a storm, as opposed to a poorly constructed one succumbing to the elements. While the storm might contribute to the downfall of a poorly built structure, the well-built one sees it as a mere force of wind and rain. Yet, historical perspectives from the Old Testament reveal that catastrophic weather was perceived as divine judgment due to its uncontrollable and feared nature. Storms were often regarded as metaphors for divine discipline and testing. Although Jesus demonstrated authority over a storm, bringing safety to his disciples, it's crucial to note that they were on the Sea of Galilee where storms were commonplace. Jesus' power over the storm served as evidence of his deity, emphasizing a different point rather than solely ensuring the disciples' safety. This insight challenges modern sermons about seeking shelter in times of storms. The biblical verse Luke emphasizes being dressed in readiness and keeping lamps lit, symbolizing preparation and vigilance. Jesus urges against accumulating earthly treasures and instead advocates focusing on eternal perspectives and heavenly treasures. This aligns with the anticipation of Christ's second coming, as emphasized in the subsequent parable. Being dressed in readiness and keeping lamps burning metaphorically call for a state of constant preparedness for action and spiritual enlightenment. In conclusion, the message is to be prepared not only for earthly tasks, but also for the anticipation of Christ's return aligning one's focus on God and eternal destiny. The video encourages viewers to express their readiness in the comment section, concluding with gratitude for watching 
and an invitation to subscribe for future content.